Hi guys, how are you? And welcome back to another video. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about a uh, watch and that I'm sure you've all heard before. It's been getting a lot of traction on YouTube and, well, a lot of traction on YouTube, a lot of tra traction on um, AliExpress. Now, it's kind of known within the uh, watch uh, budget watch community and I'm sure you will, will recognize it as soon as I uh, put it in the screen. Now, the brand is Parnas and the watch is a Parnas Daytona. Now, the watch that I will review today, where I'll be reviewing today, is not this one, because you've all seen it before, and I'm sure it's nothing new, and it's very, very familiar. It is this one. Now, I won't do, I won't be doing a head-to-head -head comparison. I'll just be reviewing the watch from my perspective. I just got it a few days ago, and now you're, you're, I'm sure you're all aware of with everything that's been going around the world. You cannot go outside the house, so you've been mainly will be wearing your watches from uh, the living room to the kitchen, the kitchen to the living room to the bedroom and so on and so forth. Or probably the uh, most amount of action that we're all going to see is going to your local supermarket to buy some supplies because you can call them supplies. You are not going to call them um, uh, groceries. Now, nevertheless, let's get back to the um, to the watch. Now, I brought this in here. It's not for comparison. I just brought it to you to introduce this guy and I'm going to put this away so you guys kind of um, just going to put it away so just kind of keep this one in hand. Now the watch that we have here today like I said it's based on the uh, Daytona. I'll put a link in the description box where you can actually get this guy. I got it from uh, AliExpress for I think it was around $74 and I bought it in euros it was around 66 euros something like that. Uh, I bought it there was no shipment fee so uh, really really good. Now I got this one because I really really love the homage and I actually went for this guy because I love the dial and I'm sure you know it uh, it's based on the um Daytona uh, case so it's pretty straightforward where you where he, where he actually gets it but I went for this one because I think uh, I think it's a bit of an original design on the dial I'm not a hundred percent sure but I've done a little bit of research and I actually couldn't find uh, couldn't find anything I, I couldn't come up with anything online to to go right it's done after a I don't know after a different um, different dial that Rolex may have done in a, in, in a uh, reference dating a while ago. Now, nevertheless, me personally, I've never had a Daytona homage. I've seen it. I, I've never worn one. I've 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 only seen them in in, in reviews. So, um, the review that I will do today will be based on my experience with this watch and um, and this watch only, and the previous one, which was the homage now the first one which is the homage now i actually loved really this one um really 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 i, I loved it quite a bit actually that sounds very weird I've, I've i'm in love with the watch wouldn't be anything weird to say about that but nevertheless i've worn this quite a bit and it's quite versatile it's it's um really really good size and good specs now the bracelet there are a few uh, things that i would complain complain about but we'll keep that towards the end of the video now today we'll go through uh, measurements specifications um we'll take a look at the dial we'll take a look at the back of the watch we'll take a look at the the bracelet we'll talk about things that i do like and things about don't that i don't like and again this will be just my analysis and uh, my uh, time spent with the uh, the watch and at the end, I'll let you guys know if I do recommend it or I don't recommend it. Now, I have my trusty caliper, uh, caliper tool here that kind of, uh, they will kind of, they will actually go through the measurements with us. They'll, like, they'll help us to get more of an uh, ac accurate reading. So that's the first, well, uh, sorry, it will help us get an, an accurate reading. And now, oh, before I actually start the, the review, now I'm going to mention that the watch was supposed to come in this box so the first one that i got actually came in this box this one came in this box the second one for some reason didn't so in here in the box you'd have your usual um let me just take that apart your usual um harness booklet that I, I think it's in Chinese and oh, no, it's in English as well sorry that's it proves that I haven't opened it I didn't even look at it um a uh, harness international warranty guarantee that doesn't have anything on the back reference sold by nothing so just the the number there and a few 
things in here, pins and stuff to remove the links and that we have a tag. Now that's something that I asked for when I actually bought the first one. So bear in mind. Now I'm just showing you the box from the first one because this one didn't come with one. So I'll put that aside just as a reference. So that would probably be on the negative um, things that I would complain about the watch because uh, it didn't come in, a, in the proper box like the first one did. Now, nevertheless, let's go into the measurements and specifications. Now, my trusty caliper tool with, uh, there you go. So, if you're looking at the thickness of the case of, sorry, let's put that in there, 13.4. Uh, now, you're looking at a lug to lug distance. Now, let's put that there, sorry. It is a close, close, close. 46.4, I want to say 46, 46.4. And you're looking at a diameter without the crown, you're looking at 40, sorry, with the crown, it's 43. And without the crown, it's actually 38.5. So actually really, really small um, uh, dimensions there. So 38.5 actually pretty uh, suits pretty much all wrists. I don't have a big wrist. I have a 38, uh, sorry, I have a 38, I have a 6.3 inch wrist now oh sorry let me get this back as well to show you guys that it tapers down to 15.8 millimeters on the clasp and lug to lug i didn't do this guy here now that sorry lug to lug lug width is a 20 millimeter so actually it's really nice to um swap bracelets if you do want to swap bracelets which would be something that i would consider in the future because i'm not mad about this one now we'll have a look at the um the dial so on the dial you are looking at uh, the, uh, they're not applied into the indices they're all painted on and uh, you have uh, numerals at 12 o'clock position at the six o'clock position with two sub dials now the dial on the left the dial on the uh, nine o'clock position there is for the uh, chronograph and the dial on the right is for the 24 hour marker for am and pm and you're looking at a date function between four and five so i want to say four in a little bit now, the case is 3 on L uh, stainless steel for the case, the bracelet, and the uh, crown, and the crown pushers. And you have a sapphire crystal covering the dial, and you have the bezel, which it's claimed to be a ceramic bezel insert. So it's like the one that you find in, Day in the Daytona. Now, I don't know if the one in the Daytona moves. I don't, I don't think it does. And this is, um, so it's a fixed bezel, so it doesn't turn. It's silver with... Uh, black numerals so with the, with the black numerals now you have uh, two pushers on the case one at the two o'clock position and one at the four o'clock position exactly like you would have on the daytona the one at the two o'clock position starts the chronograph now you can stop it also from the uh, one at the from the top pusher on the right and you can reset it from the one at the bottom at the four o'clock position now, and you can screw these things in as well. Now, the stated uh, water resistance is 50 meters, so I wouldn't recommend getting this wet. I think the uh, Rolex is 100 meter water resistant, so there you go. Now, like I said, the reason I actually went for this guy was because I love that dial. It has like the cream color on the dial makes it look kind of vintage and everything, so really straightforward, uh, pretty simple. Um, uh, so pretty simple uh, hands, uh, I want to say fence post hands, pretty straightforward. Uh, there's not a lot of loom on them, so I wouldn't actually think about, you know, you, it'd be kind of really hard to read outside. So there you go. And um, like I said, sapphire crystal covering the dial. Taking a look around at the case, so it's not a signed case at all. Uh, sorry, signed case, uh, signed crown, and it's not a, a screw in, so it's just pull uh, push and pull it's a two position uh, crown at the first the first position just the time and the sorry the the first the, the first position adjust the date I'm losing it which you see down here so I should go back to the 22nd because it is the 22nd today I've never worn a watch in my entire life I don't know what I'm talking about and the second position actually uh, 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 it does the um the time so just the time and the the hour so just push that back in there now taking going back on the case guys so you have really nice finish around the case you have um nice polished finish so it's kind of a fingerprint magnet but 
what are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. So actually, it's really, really nice. Looks really good outside. If you ever do get a chance to take it outside, I'll actually, uh, I posted a picture on my Instagram with this, but it was indoors. So I'll leave it in the description there, guys. Check me out on Instagram as well. I have quite a few watches. And um, good finishing around the case. I'm not going to complain. And the also, the like I was saying, the, the pushers, um, they're very easy to unscrew and screw back in. So that's pretty nice. Now, the like I said, um, Sapphire Crystal, dead flat sapphire crystal no ar coating of any sorts on it and uh, it kind of protrudes out a little bit but it is sapphire so i don't mind and um, i have a few watches that actually are that have hard licks and they protrude a bit more and they actually kind of chipped on the side so you have kind of really have to be um picky about it uh, sorry picky you have to be finicky picky what am i talking about um the bracelet going back on the bracelet going back on the brace going on the bracelet guys 20 millimeter bracelet easy to to a uh, to um, uh, change the bracelets if you want it it's a combination of uh, polished and the middle links are uh, sorry the middle links are polished and the side links are um, brushed so it tapers down to 16 like I was saying and it has a deploying clasp which is kind of the first time when I closed it it was kind of uh, hard to close but it will loosen up i think with the uh, time so it's a uh, fix it's a um nice mill clasp which I, which i like which has a bit of uh, design here don't know what they were going for here but one of these things on these parnas uh, watches is the fact that the bracelet like it sticks out and it covers a lot of the wrist so if you have a small wrist it doesn't go around it's not a, it's not a nice curvature to go around the wrist so that's one of the things that i didn't like and now uh double push there's no safety just as it is double push and you just push it in now as you can see guys it does stick out a little bit when you when you lock it in like that so you kind of have an idea so it would be a bit longer on the wrist but it's not the end of the world because it's a small case and it's 46 from lug to lug so i would say i think it's probably like 50 if i put it on those things as well but nevertheless it's not bad but if you do have a small wrist this might actually affect it so the um bracelet the links are just i just took a couple of them out there there are um screw in pins sorry i just want to help you there so you can see it's screw in pins they're kind of hard to take out and i had the same issue with my previous one the previous one that i showed you at the start of the video and one more thing that i actually kind of found cool if it was a plus on the bracelet was it has this small little extension here now it's not a diver extension by any means and it's just kind of like if your hand uh, if your wrist expands uh, it'll help you to get a bit more um you just let the the uh, wrist breathe and it you don't have a lot of um uh, adjustments here you only have uh three holes so it's not the end of the world but then again for what you're paying I guess it's all right so again not too much to complain there now just to look back on the dial there guys sorry on the dial on the uh, back of the case you have the uh it's a it's, it's a, a screw in uh, screw in case back and uh, it's not uh, you're not you can't see inside and it's covered so like your typical uh, Rolex case back so there you go but uh, that's one of the things that I particularly might not like about the the watch because if it's not a Rolex and you don't have a Rolex dealer or your uh, watch guide that looks after your watches wouldn't particularly you know have probably the the tools to to open it to open the back now, when you need to change the battery, because like I said, this watch features a uh, Seiko a VK64 um, Mecha Quartz, which is one of the plus, one of the pluses for this, because uh, you're paying only 65 euros, 75 dollars for it. So that's actually pretty cool, because you find watches that cost a lot more money than this, and you don't find that movement in them. But then again, you kind of sacrifice certain things when you're buying from AliExpress, and probably like quality so on and so forth now what does what does what that means the seiko uh, vk mecha quartz means that you are getting a nice sweeping hand of the uh, of the chronograph hand and like i was showing you previously when you stop it so it's not like it's 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 a sweeping motion it's not more like tick 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 with a bit more pause between them that wasn't that wasn't my best explanation of of, of uh, what Seiko Quartz uh, Seiko Mecha Quartz is, but you know you guys get the idea. So whoever's watching the uh, the videos will know what I'm talking about.
Now, like I said, stop it from this position here and you press and it just jumps all the way back to 12. Now, guys, to be completely honest, you know, you are paying what you're paying, but there are certain things that I would love that I've, I think I would have done better or not necessarily I would have done better as in things that I, I think even for 65, 70 euros from AliExpress, maybe we've, we've come to expect more when you're buying watches from the, the Chinese markets or from these websites, but uh, you know, nevertheless. Now guys, towards the end of the video now, I said to you guys what I like and what I don't like about this watch. I'll start with what I don't like about the watch. So one of my biggest problems with this was the, the bracelet. Now the bracelet is nicely finished, but the, the quality control at it is pretty bad. The pins were very hard to move, to um, to unscrew. And with the previous watch that I had on the pins, um, they came out. And suddenly, I, 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 I think I don't know what I was doing. And the watch um, was literally was hanging in my uh, jacket sleeve. So I was like, what the hell is going on? So I had problems not with the first one, with the second one as well, so as you can see. And also on the bracelet, like I was showing you guys, this covers a lot of the wrist, so when you when you're resting your arm on uh, on let on a flat surface, it wouldn't actually feel the same. So it wouldn't it's probably sticking out a bit more. Not if you have small wrists. Now, the second thing that I don't like is the misaligned um, chronograph hand. So this doesn't go directly onto twelve o'clock. Now you kind of have that issue with certain watches, especially in this price point. But you know. That's just me being crazy, but you know, like for instance, Seiko, the bezel on the uh, Seiko SKX doesn't always, didn't always lined up. So I had the same kind of problem with this guy as well. Now this is a bit more to the right and it's not as visible as the other one, but still, you know, I never, I wasn't a big, it wasn't a big, it's not a big issue, but then again, it's maybe it's just me being crazy. Uh, third thing, it's the uh, poor quality control. Now, even still, I was saying, I was talking to you about the bracelet. It could have been done better The on the Parnas logo here. I like that, but it's going to scratch really, really, really quick. And the 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 quality control also on the bracelet still where it's uh, meeting the case here, the way it moves and it's kind of rattly now and it's not finished properly uh, around here around the uh, the buckle as you can see there's a bit of extra material left in here so and also the last thing that i don't like is the rolex rolex case back now it is a cheap watch so it's okay not too much to complain about but if i do want to change the battery and like i said to you like i mentioned earlier on maybe the uh, your watchmaker that you're the person that looks after your watches it doesn't you know doesn't have one of the rolex case back openers so now i did open this one but i'm using it uh, i did open it with the with a rubber tennis ball so you can actually open the back like that i'm trying to realign the um the chronograph hand but it, it didn't actually work so it just came back as soon as you start it and reset it just goes back to its original position so i'm not a watch guy as in i'm not a watchmaker so or watch repair man whatever you call it but you know i tried so it was kind of annoying and those are the things that i didn't like things that i do like about it because i actually love this watch for what it is with those defects it's the the dial is the first thing i love the vintage look i love the two the, the kind of panda panda looking vintage panda looking dial even if it is cream I love the fact that you know it looks it's 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 a small looking dial so it's actually you know sits really really well on the wrist and I love the fact that it has sapphire crystal so it doesn't scratch so it it's it's really really good to to have and you can wear it without actually caring that much about it it's a really really good uh, beater watch so this between this and the other one I would probably change them but I'm looking at selling this guy and keeping this guy because probably having the two of them, this one wouldn't actually get as much uh, wrist time as this one. Because this one actually makes it more look more, the dial makes it a bit more look a bit more original than it actually is. So that's what I was saying. It's more like a, it, it makes me feel that I'm not wearing like an homage watch. Then again, shouldn't encouraging shouldn't be encouraging people to make homage watches. And fourth thing, fourth thing that I do like about this watch is the uh, the movement. The uh, Mecha Quartz, like I was saying, guys, you find um, watches that cost a lot more money than this than um, 
they will actually feature the same movement. So it's like it's relatively inexpensive to own and to have. And you get around four years, I think, with the battery. Now, that's what is stated on the website. But then again, you know, you can you can change the battery if your watch guy looks after these things. Would I recommend it? Yes, 100%. I don't think I've actually... I, I have a couple of watches in my collection that I bought. I was so mad in love with them that... That I was like, oh my god! And as soon as I wore them for like two weeks, it's like, no, it was this was a big mistake. It was an impulse buy, whatever it was. This I would totally recommend. As soon as I put it, like, it looks really good on the wrist. It's not big. I actually love the. Uh, I love that dial. Like I was saying, I love the specs, the quartz, the ceramic bezel with the date and everything on the dial. So actually, I would definitely recommend it. It makes for a really, really good beater watch. It looks really good on the wrist. It's not a big. Speaking of wrists, um, today I am wearing my, I have to do a wristwatch check, I am re re wearing my um, Sharky uh, 62 Mass uh, sixty two mass Homage. Stick around guys, I'm going to make a full review of this watch as well. I had this for a long time now and I didn't get a chance to review it. And it's on a uh, carbon bracelet, carbon texture bracelet because it's not full carbon. A bracelet? Strap, I'm sorry. And... Um, Looks really good on the wrist. Guy, guys, another uh, good company to buy from, uh, Sharky or Heimdall. Uh, again, they've been drawing. They've been. Uh, they make good homage watches from uh, Seiko, but they've been. They have a couple of original designs as well. But they've been gaining a lot of traction as well for, uh, on the website. Now, let me just put this, take this off, and show you guys how the harness looks on the wrist. Just to have an idea on the size there. Now, there you go, guys. Like I said, that dial is amazing and it looks really, really well. It sits really well on my wrists. At the moment, I have a 6.3 inch wrist and it fits perfectly. I love the fact that it, that it, it like the bracelet kind of tapers down. And this is what I was saying there. There you go. So it doesn't protrude out that much because it's a small, it's a relatively small watch. So it goes down. Sorry, nicely. I was showing you guys something else. But there you go. So there you go guys, that's how it looks on the wrists. And this will scratch quite a bit, but then you go, that's because I have it on this one as well, so you can tell. But I don't mind that much since it's a beater watch, but hey, what are you gonna do? I probably changed the strap at some stage and put like a nice vintage leather strap on it. But uh, that was it. Now guys, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. And uh, this was quite a long video. And um, please do like and subscribe. Check my um, Instagram feed. Uh, support the channel. Like, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, click that notification button, guys. I'm gonna be back with a another watch. I'll probably do a review of that one as well. Or I'll compare them side by side. Tell you what I do or I don't like about which and other of them. And um, stick around, like I said. And thank you very much for sticking in so far. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks a million. Bye.